this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 14, verse 10, as well as James chapter 5, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for giving us this word, Lord. God, help us to apply it in our daily lives. Help us to remember it. Holy Spirit, quicken our spirit so that we remember your word. We are in the live application, God, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, Luke 14, 10. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. All right, and we've had this lesson before. And you guys know the first time the Lord gave us this scripture, the Lord tested me the next day and I failed. (laughs) And then the second time um, the Lord tested me again, I think I did better at it. And then like, I just know the Lord is going to, it seems like every time we get the scripture, I get tested. So it says, but when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. All right. And so meaning that, you know, when when you God allows you a blessing of something and and you're invited somewhere or you go somewhere or you're standing in line at Sam's Club and you know that you have the business, you have the business cards or you can go in and skip everybody and go in early. Right. But instead of doing that, instead of skipping your car ahead because, you know, you're trying to get to the turning lane and everybody else is in line and, and you could just kind of scooch on by as long as you take the shoulder, that that's not the way that you do that, right? As Christians and especially people, especially if you're riding around with Jesus bumper sticker, you know, make sure that you are are being a Christian, make sure you are applying it in your, in your live situation. I keep saying live situation because I keep thinking of in the military, when you're using real ammunition, you say it's a live fire, right? This is like the real actual case. I need you guys to remember that these bullets are real. This is, this is the real deal. Now, when you're applying the word, when we are actually in it, right? We need to remember the word and we need to allow when the Holy Spirit quickens our spirit and and tells us, hey, this is it. You don't need to ignore it. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't turn away from what he said, right? Don't do it a little bit, but then kind of come out like I did that first time when I failed. Remember, um, I had gone somewhere and I invited myself in, right? I had invited myself this area it was like some VIP area with the kids on a field trip and I told you guys about how I was like well there's enough space and I invited myself in and it was wrong I was totally wrong because I felt the Holy Spirit when I invited myself in and I had to go out after that I didn't go back in again to the next session and so but to me that's a fail partial obedience is disobedience right and so um yeah, the Holy Spirit have let me know, you know, no, don't do that. It's one thing if they invite you in, it's something totally different if you invite yourself in. And so this is, you know, this is daily life. We face these circumstances every day. They are common to man, right? And it's one thing if your friend says move up higher, but if he doesn't, don't don't need to be seen need to be honored need to experience that thing because you're going to miss it and you're not going to be able to go to the back behind the scenes aquarium section any other time no god will get you what he wants you to have it was not even worth it honestly it was not even worth it and yet i had to sit and think on how i had disobeyed the holy spirit after that right So it was definitely not worth that. And God knew that. That's why he was testing me to see. And so um, just know that, you know, God has great things in store for you. And he doesn't need your help getting it to you. He doesn't need your help getting you into that first spot in the lane over there that lets all the cars by. 
If he's going to favor you, he's going to favor you or he's going to cause someone to favor you. But don't try to favor yourself so that, you know, you can be seen or you can get the first spot. That's not for us. God has a will for us, right? He might have someone in the back back there that he wants you to talk to. So it says, but when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. All right. We don't bring honor to ourselves. We allow God to do that. All right. So this is the second scripture that the Lord gave me, James chapter five, verse 12. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. All right. And so, you know, when we receive Christ into our heart, we're saying yes, right? We are saying yes to his will. We're saying yes to the things that come with allowing him to be Lord over our lives. We are brothers and sisters at that point. We are, um, believers at that point and and we have allowed our yes to be yes and we've allowed our no to be no we have not sworn any oath we are have not you know sworn anything we have just said yes to Christ and we're living it we're walking in it right Christ did all the work we didn't have to do anything special all we had to do was say yes that we do believe right and so um, this is is how it's kind of conflated today, not kind of, this is how it's conflated today is that um, when we say yes to God, we're also saying yes to his Holy Spirit being in us, right? Because when we believe the Holy Spirit comes into us and seals us until the day of redemption. And so when the Holy Spirit does that, you're, you are allowing him lordship over you, right? The Holy Spirit is letting you know what the will of God is for your life. And he's interceding. He is causing you to walk out the will of the father and all of that from you just saying yes. Right. And so if you have said yes to God and that has caused the Holy Spirit to come into you, then when he presents you with these circumstances, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, right? Don't say yes to God, but then when the circumstance comes, you say no in the circumstance and you chase after self, you chase after your own will. I was listening to um, Timothy Keller. I know some of you know that he passed, but he was just, he had talked about, I want to say this was many years ago, maybe this actual sermon that I'm thinking of, but I just recently heard it. And it was basically talking about um, the, uh, the modern day idolatry. One of them is the fact of worshiping self, right? Um, putting yourself at the center of things, putting yourself at the center of, of whether or not you, it's your will, right? So, but if you are worshiping Christ and you put yourself at the center and you choose you over the yes that you said to God, then that's idolatry, right? You're choosing your own will and you're walking in your own will. You're not walking in the will of the father. You're not walking in the Holy Spirit's guidance. And there is condemnation condemnation there, right? It says there there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit, right? We walk after the spirit of God so that we don't fall under condemnation. And God has a wonderful will for us when he tells us these things from his word, like Luke 14, 10, such as, you know, friend move up higher that, that verse, when he's telling us these things, and then we get into these live fire situations, he wants us to go forth and do his will, do what we said, do our yes, 
right? Our yes was yes to God. Our yes was yes to lordship. Our lordship comes from the Holy Spirit's guidance. And we need to hear that guidance and move forward in that guidance. We need to hear that guidance and, and keep going when we know that this is a live fire situation. This is the word applied. I need to walk it out. I need your help, Holy Spirit, or Holy Spirit, provide me a way of escape from this temptation. Holy Spirit, show me the way in this. I know this is applying to that word. Show me what to do. Holy Spirit is going to help you. He's going to intercede for you the good and perfect will of the Father, right? The Holy Spirit is interceding the will of God. The Holy, the one who we just went through this scripture in the previous teaching, you know, God, the Father, Father is the one who searches hearts, right? And he knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit is interceding the will of the father for your life. So we need to listen to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes in and he's telling us what to do in a circumstance. Why? Because we need to let our yes be yes and our no be no. We need to um, allow ourselves to, to fall under that lordship that the Holy Spirit is providing for us and, and, and continue in that yes to Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your beautiful word. Your word is truth, is light, it's goodness, and it comes from you, Father. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Father. All right, you guys, um, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, Go ahead and pray this prayer with me, but more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he's going to show you your new church home, um, a church home that you can go to a place where you can go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, he's going to show you other Christians who you can be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as, you know, he's going to help you make disciples of all men, telling other people about the Father, telling other people about Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.